Hello again, welcome. This is the second video on the series of histology with Saleh. And this is the second part of the first chapter of this John Quera's basic histology book. That is the reference we are using in these series. Uh, this was the last thing we talked about in the previous video. Oh, have you subscribed? Thank you. Uh, haven't you? Okay, I'll give you some time. Go ahead. Do the subscription, please. And, uh, okay, you clean it up. The last thing we mentioned was the staining part or the coloring of this uh, prepared tissue on the glass slide or the metal grid. The staining is done for a purpose. Now, what is that purpose? Why do we stain the prepared tissue? The one very common and the real reasons behind this is that the tissues, the cells, and the cell components are usually colorless. So, even though we have cut the tissues, if the tissues have become thin, the tissues have become translucent, they can be examined through microscope. But since all the structures under the microscope seem to be colorless, distinguishing and differentiation of these uh, structures from one another is going to be somewhat impossible since everything looks alike. You couldn't know what is mitochondria or where is the lysosome or where is the DNA or the nucleus or where is the extracellular matrix? Or, or, or where is the collagen fiber? Everything just looks alike. That's why we use the staining method. We stain, we color, so that these structures get specific colors, each of them depending on their specific uh, characteristics. Uh, specific molecules that they hold, thus they can then be studied properly. So staining is the next and hopefully the final method. So staining is done by using methods of staining and these different methods that exist usually each of them use different dyes or stains or simply put colors these dyes usually interact with the tissue structures or with the molecules in the tissue that is prepared for study through electrostatic bonds or linkages. This electrostatic linkage is sometimes called salt linkage as well, meaning there is going to be a positive charge and a negative charge involved. If the dye has molecules with abundant positive charge in it, it will interact with uh, substances of the prepared tissue that are basically negatively charged and vice versa. If the dye is negatively charged, it will s stain and dye the structures of the prepared tissue that are positively charged. The negatively charged ones or the dyes that are negatively charged are usually called anionic and the ones that are positively charged are called 
cationics. So anionics, one type, and cationics is the other type. The anionics usually interact and dye or stain the acidic the structures of the tissue and the cationics usually dye the basic structures of the tissue since the ion anionics have the negative charge and Acidics have positive charge, that's why they bind. And in here, it has positive charge, and it interacts with the negative charge in here, forms the bond, and thus the dye is introduced into the portions of the tissue, and the tissue gets the stain and shows a specific color to itself. Now we'll talk a little bit more on the acidic and the basic types. The dyes that are usually cationics are called acidophilics. Those are that are anionics, they are called basophilics. So basophilics usually acid a little bit earlier they bind to acidic components of the tissue they like negative charges or anionics and the uh, specific structures of the tissue and cells that uh, are those acidic compounds and they uh, are basophilics and they go to take this basic dyes and uh, be stained by them are uh, DNA RNA and glycosaminoglycans and of course some other structures too but the main ones are these since DNA is deoxynucleic deoxyribonucleic acid the main acid ribonucleic acid glycosaminoglycans it has amine group so in here as you see all of them are acidic they have the uh, negative charges and these negative charges go ahead and bind to the positive charges of the uh, dyes that are introduced to them. These uh, specific basophilic dyes that are used are called blue dyes. These blue dyes are three, there are three blue dyes that are usually used. First is uh, methylene, second is alcyon, and third is uh, another dye. I seem to have forgotten it, and there is a big problem in here that my screen recorder doesn't pause. I need to stop it, and thus everything will be finished. Okay, this is going to be your homework. Uh, I'm so ashamed. This is going to be your homework. The other blue dye that is usually used. Find it out what it is. Okay, we'll go forth and move into the sorry acidophilix. The acidophilics are exactly opposite the basophilics. So for the basophilics, we had 
acidic compounds for the acidophilics we have basic compounds oh my god acidophilic so this acidophilics they like to bind with basic compounds they like positive charges or cationics the specific uh, types or structures that take these colors are collagen the matrix of cartilage and any other structure that doesn't take the dye of basophilix. The dyes that are used in this part are eosine, which is a very famous one, it is uh, orange G, and is acid. These are the three dyes that are used as acidophilic dyes. Okay, now we are ready to go forth. To use the dyes, we don't just use one type of dye usually. They're mostly used in combination, and one of the most commonly used combinations and methods of dyeing is the H and E or hematoxylene and eosine since we know the eosine beforehand it is acidophilic uh, the hematoxylene is uh, the opposite of it. it it is basophilic so when we use the hematoxylene with eosine what happens is the DNA RNA uh, are taking the color of hematoxylene and that color would be uh, dark blue either the dark blue color or purple I guess this is purple it should be something like this this is the color of the hematoxylin. Any other structure that doesn't take or doesn't interact with the hematoxylin portion of the H and E, it will be colored or stained by eosine, and the color is usually pink. So the color of eosine is pink. Any structure that takes the color of eosine or is acidophilic will be stained pink. Most importantly, collagen. Not just collagen, but most importantly, collagen. And here we can see that in this A portion of this figure 1 2. This is the lumen of the small intestine. G shows the goblet cells which are secretory cells and also these other areas are the cells lining the walls of the intestine so this is the hematoxylene and eosine type that this type of coloring or this type of staining happens with it we have another type of or method of staining which is a little bit complex but is mostly used and uh, this one is called periodic acid shift reaction or pass reaction this pass reaction type is usually the pass reaction is usually since i have written it also in blue is the basophilic type and the color that it gives to the structures is going to be either dark blue 
for our beloved purple. So only the, the suppose only the hematoxylin portion of it is available in the periodic acid shift staining. So this uh, second portion is the periodic acid shift staining, and as you see, uh, there is most abundantly the uh, bluish or the purplish colors in here. The same uh, tissue. It's the lumen, the goblet cells, and also the other cells lining the walls of the intestine. We have another type of pus. It's called fusion reaction. This fusion reaction is a subtype of pos reaction, and this fusion reaction is usually uh, precisely and only used for the staining of DNA in the nucleus uh, of the cell. If we want to study the DNA of the cell, and that's our own and only purpose, we can use the fusion reaction um, a variation of the pulse reaction type of studying or staining the thing. Now, before going to this other portion like microscopy, we need to say one thing. Yes, we did say that uh, the end of preparation steps is going to be the staining, but no. There's one thing remaining. Before starting to study the completely prepared tissue through the microscope and after the finishing of the uh, step of staining, there is one other step that has to be done. This one is especially done with the uh, light microscopy technique and for the glass slide that has been prepared. This step is called covering the glass slide. So we have to put a cover on the glass slide so that the prepared tissue stays safe, is preserved, and doesn't change by any uh, outside or external uh, reaction or action. This cover needs to be translucent, it needs to be clear, it needs to be clean, and the adhesive that is being used to put or to uh, glue this cover onto the slide or onto the prepared slide also needs to be translucent, clear, and clean. Thus, the preparing uh, portion is finished, and uh, next step and next stage comes, and that is using the microscope to study the prepared tissue. This is enough for the second video. Thank you for patience for this amount of energy that you have put to bear and sit and watch this video and try to learn knowledge, learn medical uh, educations uh, and uh, learn histology in particular. Thank you very much. Once again, this needs to be done. Have a good time. Next video, we'll talk about light microscopy. Dun, dun, dun.